Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, July 16th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, four Marines and one gunman are dead after a massacre in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The gentleman whose name is on the screen there, Muhammad Youssef Abdul Aziz, makes a quick trip from Lee Highway to Amnicola, gets out and we now know shot and killed four Marines at the Naval Reserve Center on Amicola. And the mainstream media doubles down on attacking Jade Helm critics. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Alex Jones here with Joe Biggs reporting from InfoWars.com in Austin, Texas with the latest developments concerning the tragic shooting that has already shot at least four Marines dead, active duty dead. Now, we've been warning about this for a long time, and, and, and as we're shooting live, they just announced the purported uh, identity uh, of the main suspect, the lone gunman, and we're going to be going over that. Mohammed Yosef, how do you pronounce that, Abu Dulaziz? Joe Biggs is here. This just came in literally 60 seconds ago. We were going to shoot a news update and look at who we think from three or four groups it could possibly be. Mentally ill sympathizers of ISIS, an ISIS operative that infiltrated uh, through the porous border, or would it be a false flag where they set up some Patriot and drill and attack a military base and claim that it was some type of anti-Jade Helm person? Because they were in the New York Times today quoting me without showing a link that I said it was about exterminating militias. I mean, I challenge you to show me where I said that. A $1,000 prize. So you see stuff like that, it's scary. But the fourth is some good old boy or some well-meaning but mentally ill hippie uh, or hillbilly or whoever, could be a leftist or could be a right-winger, could see a bunch of troops, get freaked out, think it's an invasion because the media keeps saying, I said that and others said that and Ted Cruz said that and Governor Abbott said that and Chuck Norris said that. None of us said that. And then they shoot him. So I said, we we're sitting here minutes ago because the press conference is ending right now. Yeah. Mentally ill follower of ISIS, actual ISIS, false flag blaming patriots, or it could be someone who flipped out who was mentally ill or whatever just on their own because of all the Jade Helm hype then we get blamed. And I've said that in a whole bunch of newscasts since then. There are forces in the government that want gun confiscation, that want total dictatorial control. It's now happening. They're doing some of the biggest exercises ever. And it lists Texas as hostile in other areas. They're clearly getting ready for false flags. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen this summer. All I know is we have to investigate all of this and we have to get a debate going about the fact that we're pretty much a dictatorship now. Even mainline constitutional scholars on both sides say that. But to go over more of this is former Staff Sergeant U.S. Army Joe Biggs. I mean, I mean, to me, there's four things here. Who would they blame? Uh, now they're politically correct, kind of burying this because it doesn't fit their narrative. Uh, also, they're declaring it domestic terrorism right away when they were first announcing it was a white guy. Yeah. Uh, now they may back off that. Uh, we have 22 suicides a day of former and current U.S. military personnel. That's the real crisis is how bad they're being treated and, and the treatment they're not getting uh, for serious illnesses like you have from combat wounds. And then the point you made, the bullet holes going into the Marine recruitment site, there's the no firearms executive order of Obama, who he continued from Clinton. So, Joe, let's go over some of those facets. Yeah, one of the most interesting things is the fact that as a service member, when you're not in combat, you're not allowed to protect yourself. You know, if you have weapons, you have to turn them into the armory on base. And this is a sad thing because it's a gun-free zone. ISIS looks for soft targets. A recruiting station is very much a soft target because these guys are not able to defend themselves whatsoever, but they will trust you to go into combat, die for your country, and they'll trust these people to pluck, you know, American lives out to enlist in the military and then go sacrifice their lives or end up with these, you know, hidden wounds for the rest of their lives. So that's just an interesting thing, the fact that you will not let them arm themselves and be able to protect 
themselves from an act like this. And this is what we keep seeing from time and time again. ISIS is attacking these soft targets. Every time we have these gun-free zones, this is where they're going to be looking for. A convention center in Garland. Garland outside Dallas. Uh, other, other facilities, they attack. Uh, shopping malls in Kenya, and even the head of Interpol says the answer is arming the general public. They're saying that the shooting suspect has been identified as Muhammad Yosef Abdulaziz. Now, earlier the reports were saying that it was a white male, uh, so now they are saying it is this gentleman right here who had opened up fire and shot. And, you know, we've got people like Donald Trump, We've got people like Ted Cruz saying that we need to stop making these places gun-free zones. And as you can see the picture up on the screen right here, at the recruiting center, it shows no guns allowed. This is a gun-free zone. This is what a soft target looks like. How do you expect a military hated by so many other countries to sit there as sitting ducks off base and not be armed? Well, this is an attack on our military, not just in a, in a physical aspect, but mentally as well. Because here you are, we're supposed to look like the hardest military in the world. And meanwhile, we're wearing red heels, we're marching around, we're prancing around. If you get on Twitter and you find some of these pro-ISIS accounts, they laugh at the U.S. military. You know, Ten years ago— This is meant would... to demoralize us and make us look bad worldwide. Oh, this okay. is how, if I wanted to overthrow the country, how I would do it. And now they're going to put transgender in the military— uh, and again, I'm not attacking transgender people, but give me a break. The military is not a place for guys to wear dresses. I mean, vice versa. You want to do that? Go, you know, hang out in New York City or wherever. Don't, you know, frontline combat with a cherry shirt, you know, with, a, with a skirt with cherries on it. Yeah, I mean, how are they going to alter the uniform to, uh, to fit these people and so they feel good or they feel comfortable around there? I mean, and, and it, mex it messes with the psyche, too, of the soldier itself. When you're in barracks, how is that going to happen? So you've got a lady who wants to be a guy, so now they're openly they're able to, to live in there? That screws with people's psyche. It screws with little kids that now boys are in the girls' bathroom, and when the girls don't like it, they're thrown out of the school. But segueing back into the big issue here at hand, four people are dead, others are wounded. Uh, as we shoot this, the guys disappeared into the woods, and you know all the stuff's going on. We've seen false flags before, and I don't know if this is a false flag, but regardless, it's a kind of massive false flag in that our own government has let ISIS and al-Qaeda be funded from Benghazi, take over Libya, take over areas of Syria, reconstitute. They were supposedly defeated because this is the new al-Qaeda group. It's the same leadership. But now it's back bigger than ever, and the answer is give more of our freedoms up, and then now soft targets are being attacked. Uh, I don't know how Obama, who's clearly been involved resurrecting the Muslim Brotherhood and these other organizations connected to ISIS, I don't know how they're going to get away with them attacking soft targets and them not getting the blame, Joe. Well, we're cutting our military forces down. Um, we look weak worldwide, whereas just years ago, we looked like some of the most hardcore Rambo people out there. We are a soft target as a whole. It seems like our government wants America to look like a soft target. They want to encourage more attacks on U.S. soil so they can militarize the police and... Turn it around on the Tea Party and veterans as they admit the main move by Northcom domestically is. Then we come out and say, hey, we're worried about Jade Helm being a further erosion of sovereignty locally. We don't think it's an imminent takeover. So they spin it to say, we believe it's an imminent takeover. Yeah. And I guarantee you in the future coming up the next few months, any kind of attacks that happen by, uh, you know, young white males in their 20s, 30s, it's going to somehow be connected to demonize this entire Jade Helm thing where they're going to use it to attack us to say that, you know, oh, well, they sparked all this paranoia. These are the guys that are, they're kind of, you know, they're coming out of the- Oh, you can see it. They've written the script. Oh, yeah, it's going to happen. And I can tell you over the next few months, the attacks are going to happen. It's just going to go out of control. I forgot. I covered on the radio today. They had an article out saying Alex Jones hates the Marines and says they're the enemy. And it was somebody else at a Toys for Tots deal who didn't even say that. And then they say, that's me in a voiceover, and it's not even us. But you've got to look at this, though. And they have the New York Times saying, here it is, New York Times, Jade Helm 15 exercise begun in Texas, keep watch. And it says, a report from InfoWars, and Alex Jones operated website, says that it's a plan to eradicate local militants and that it's an imminent takeover. I, I, we never said that, but they don't even put a link here. See the assassination of our character? Meanwhile, when we say stuff, we put links up. When we did all the... The, the article that you and Paul Joseph Watson put out where you put all the different documents talking about everything the government said leading up to this old Jade Helm, we put the links so we can back up what it is we're doing. These guys just throw out 
random sentences and sure. expect people to run along with it. They still may change the story again, uh, but clearly, I think this is leaning towards someone hearing this worldwide directive from ISIS, start attacking soft targets, attack U.S. military bases, uh, and now it's begun. And the answer is what the head of Interpol said. It's time to arm the people, not just the military. It's time to deal with these folks like we saw in Dallas. It's time to, 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 to stand up against folks that are coming after soft targets. That's the takeaway that at the end of the day, the people aiding and abetting these cowardly killers are the folks that advertise gun-free zones as shooting spree areas. Yeah, exactly. Other points. Well, I mean, I, th I think it was pretty interesting, too. They said within uh, a few minutes of the shooting that the buildings were already surrounded by police as it happened, kind of like in Waco. When the shooting first started, a couple shots were fired. There were already police running and jumping in there in that. So because it was a stakeout. Yeah, so I, I think that's a little weird because that's kind of in the middle of nowhere to have police already just by, you know, that many coming in and already rushing in. Anytime I've called 911 and I've needed them, it takes quite some time. They might have known them. and gotten a tip, like in Dallas, the FBI wasn't allowed to go after him. They'd actually brought him in, or, 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 or both the guys. And then they leaked it to the cops, look out. And so they had an off-duty cop there and others. Yeah, so, so that could have been in as well, that they knew something was about to happen, but they weren't sure. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, we just don't know. Uh, that's the problem. A government caught running fast and furious, a government caught funding the Muslim Brotherhood and radical Islamic groups, who knows what they're going to do? But, but Joe, with a worldwide call for jihad uh, and the fact that, you know, we see polls at 20-something percent of Brits like ISIS, something like 10 percent of Americans say they like it, who knows what we're, what we're going to see? What I think is interesting, what you were saying earlier, how they were attacking you about saying you hate Marines, our fan base is largely military. We have a large military fan. That's base, why they're doing it. But they, they never, but they'll never talk about that. You know, the fact that we have like our, our sponsors head down, they're military. They came to us. The, they they, well, yeah, they know the military us. listens to us because we know what we're talking about and we're patriots. That's why they're telling the military we hate them. I mean, obviously we don't. I mean, I'm a former soldier. <laughs> I don't hate myself and I don't hate my brothers who are still in. Well, they misquote me here in the New York Times and they don't even show where I said it. And then they have a new video out saying that I'm saying I hate Marines, and it's not even me. Yeah, exactly. It's a ball-headed guy, and he's not even saying that. It's ridiculous. And, I mean, also, I mean, at the same time, we lost four Marines today. You know, my heart goes out to those Marines, their families. I mean, this is ridiculous, especially if somebody knew about this in advance and didn't stop it from happening. I mean, shame on them. I mean, that's ridiculous. And shame on our government for not allowing our arms, I mean, our service members to be armed, to be able to protect themselves, especially when you're off base like that. In an area like that, you're out in the middle of nowhere. You've got nothing. I mean, you, you know who's allowed to be armed? UN diplomats and their security. The, uh, UN people can have guns at the UN building and other facilities, but we can't have guns. It, it's, it's just heartbreaking when something like this happens. I mean... You're absolutely right. Well, recapping, it looks like it's some type of ISIS-affiliated attack. Uh, again, it may be a mentally ill person affiliated with ISIS. Remember just last week, the son of a Boston police captain uh, was arrested as possible terrorist. When his father turned him in, he reportedly was basically schizophrenic. Uh, he used the name Abu Ali al-Ameriki, uh, and uh, they said he was a recent convert to Islam and that he was just basically a babbling, uh, you know, uh, basket case, and he had a bunch of guns and was planning an attack, uh, and, you know, his dad had to basically turn him in over all this. I tend to think it's probably a mentally ill person, but it might actually be a real ISIS uh, operative. Yeah, I mean, and then time and time again, we've seen the FBI set these people up and give them kind of the encouragement, these undercover guys, to push them to go over that limit to actually do it, and then they throw them in jail, you know? Well, we'll see what happens with all of this. Uh, but again, thank you so much, Joe Biggs, for all your great reporting on the rest of the crew. And we'll be back tomorrow on the syndicated radio broadcast for the Friday transmission, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Until then, we'll see you at InfoWars.com. Never forget, if you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. Jade Helm troops to operate undetected amongst civilian population. And, of course, the military people and the vets are not buying any of it. They're not stupid. You can read about how it's to get the hearts and minds and how to get the public used to working and, and the local police working with the military. 
I mean, everybody who's been in the military knows about the secret EOD program going on for 18 years. Their whole ordnance disposal, you know, quote, the army's gonna show up to defuse a bomb. But then you get the internal agreements. It's for everything from warrant service to checkpoints with military personnel in nondescript blue jumpsuits, just like the Army Ranger called in and said they were wearing EPA blue jumpsuits. It's always blue or tan jumpsuits. And it might say EPA, it might say police, uh, it might say park service. Training with the police, training with locals in plain clothes, quote, doing suspicious activities is to train the police to work with the military in covert operations and to condition the military to accept it and to condition the public to accept it. And then when we cover it and talk about it, they practice the PSYOP in real time, putting out this information. I can see the script from Army Times to military.com, to Stars and Stripes, to Bloomberg, to Daily Beast, to Vice, to the Houston Chronicle, and no exaggeration today. You go search Jade Helm. There are now hundreds of articles, and in almost all of them, yours truly is being demonized. Jones, who's warned of an imminent takeover for decades, keeps claiming it's going to happen. But of course, it never does. No, it never does. Checkpoints, TSA, open spying, uh, highway dividers being put up nationwide, uh, open manuals that the number one enemy's veterans and gun owners and Christians. I mean, come on. This is the PSYOP. Welcome back. Now, as you just heard, Alex Jones and Joe Biggs talk about the tragic shooting in Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is a case, yet again, as they pointed out, of a no armament zone, a victim disarmament zone being shot up. This is the way they described it, uh, the survivors of the first location. Of course, he was killed uh, at the second location. I believe the four Marines who were uh, killed died at the uh, second location. But at the first location, they said, well, we heard these shots, and that kind of sparked our attention. They say they got on the ground, they barricaded themselves in a safe place. They estimated that there were 30 to 50 shots fired. There you go. That's the response. That's the way we're supposed to do this. We're supposed to duck and cover, perhaps grab some scissors, some Windex that, uh, you know, throw some staplers at him if he comes to the door. That picture of what happened at that recruiting center, in that strip center, of course, there were multiple branches of the service that had uh, recruitment uh, offices there in that strip center. But what happened there and that picture of that door shot up with the no firearms sign right next to it should be iconic. That ought to be burned into the memory of everybody. We ought to pull that up every time they talk about gun control. And of course, this is what happened at Fort Hood. Many people don't realize that our military is disarmed even in military bases, not just in strip centers. What we do know now about this shooter, Mohammed Yusuf Abdulaziz, as they are saying uh, was the shooter, uh, he is a naturalized citizen from Kuwait. Uh, he is originally from Kuwait. And of course, just before this happened, ISIS tweeted out, hashtag Chattanooga. They said, oh, American dogs, soon you will see the wonders. And that happened at about, uh, about a half hour or so before the shooting. And then of course, as they report this in heavy.com, they report those facts. And then the third fact is his motive is not yet known. Really? We can't draw that conclusion? Is that too much of a conclusion <laughs> to draw? I, really, when you've got somebody that's from Kuwait, an Arabic guy, apparently uh, some ISIS site tweets out there's gonna be a shooting, but of course, we don't really know what the motivation is we're supposed to pretend. That is the blindness of political correctness. That's the blindness of the mainstream media. And it is nowhere more evident than when we talk about Jade Helm. Look at the way uh, it was reported in RT. This is just one example of many, many. And of course, people all over mainstream media are ridiculing uh, Alex Jones, Infowars, anyone who is suspicious of what's going on. They say, of course, that there's going to be 1,200 troops from all U.S. military branches, including some 200 special forces, uh, special operations forces. We don't really know the exact uh, number because the slide that we saw said there were going to be 1,200 uh, troops in Texas. So that would be 1,200 in Texas alone. But, of course, that didn't break it down as to how many were special forces and other branches. So we continue to see these different figures out there. And that's just one factoid which illustrates how they will not tell us exactly what's going on, or just tell us enough to get us suspicious. That's what the Washington Post pointed out. 
when they said uh, it would be good if you didn't want people to have these uh, paranoid conspiracy theories, as the Washington Post puts it. It'd be good if you would let us, to let us cover the actual uh, exercise. I said, no, you can't do that. And the Washington Post pointed out, well, you let us do that at Robin Sage, the large Green Beret exercise in North Carolina. RT says, while declaring various lands, quote unquote, hostile and friendly, may be normal for a simulated war game, no, it's not normal. Because when they did Robin Sage, the hostile area was called Pineland. It wasn't called Texas. It wasn't called Utah or Arizona. Nevertheless, that doesn't stop the people on the left from laughing at us in derision. Look at these uh, tweets that came out they have in the RT article. They say, J-Town 15 has started and tanks are already rolling through military bases like they own the place. RT point, put that up there. They totally missed the sarcasm. That's not what we're talking about. Certainly, there is over-militarization in this country. I find it ironic that the biggest critics of this are on the left. People who have criticized the size of the military, our involvement in multiple wars. They've criticized the dragnet surveillance state. They've criticized the torture at Gitmo. They've criticized all these different things, indefinite detention without trial, the secret treaties that are going on. I mean, so many people on the left are looking at these economic treaties that are uh, really not just about economics, as we point out over and over again. They're about changing the sovereign structure of the world's governments. That's what Jeff Sessions has said, who read it. So they look at this and they are concerned and rightfully concerned about secretive treaties, yet they don't want us to pay any attention to a secretive large-scale military exercise that really is unprecedented. They just roll on the floor laughing on Twitter. They're not concerned about the way whistleblowers are treated. Why is it and how is it that these people on the left are capable of such cognitive dissonance? It absolutely makes no sense at all. These same people who are rightfully concerned about police brutality, about racial profiling, have absolutely nothing to say when our government works with the military as well as the police, as well as the NSA, to profile everyone on a political basis, on a racial basis, on a religious basis. That's what mastering the human domain is about. They need to stop laughing and saying that we're paranoid conspiracy theorists. They need to connect the dots. It's absolutely amazing. They can see it with the treaties, but they can't see it with that. Perhaps they can also see it in Greece. We now see that in Greece, Many people on the left are now waking up to the fact that they're being dominated from a central location by central banks, by politicians who have a different agenda that is not in their national interests. They've dismissed it all in the past as just racism, as xenophobia, but that's not what's happening in Greece. As we point out, yesterday the Greek parliament did finally have their vote. They approved this new agreement, which is punitive beyond belief probably more than 10 times what the original offer was in terms of their indebtedness. The parliament waited until two o'clock in the morning, their time, that was two hours after the implied deadline. They say an anti-austerity protesters clashed with police nearby Greeks parliament early Thursday as they accepted harsh terms demanded by creditors to receive nearly $100 billion in the country's third bailout in five years. The measure passed overwhelmingly. It was cast, as I said, two hours after the midnight deadline on Wednesday. It includes, of course, deep cuts in pensions, higher taxes, and as they point out in the USA Today, the sale of most state assets. That's what the banks were after in the first place. As the BBC points out in another development, the European Central Bank has agreed to increase emergency funding for Greece for the first time since it was frozen in June. Now catch this what they're saying about the bridge loan. They say this bridging loan of 7 billion euros means that Greece will be able to repay debts to the ECB, the European Central Bank, and the IMF on Monday. Do you understand the absurdity of that? The ECB is loaning them money so that they can pay the ECB's loan. This is the kind of insanity that the bankers are using to take all of the assets of Greece. This is what they're going to do in every country. That's what they've done to third world countries for a very long time. They're moving it now to all the rest of the countries. These are the countries that are on the periphery, the, the poorer countries of Europe. Then they will move into Europe. And of course, it's being portrayed simply as a competition between Germany and Greece. There's an element of truth in that. 
Certainly, Merkel, as The Guardian points out, is gambling away Germany's reputation over Greece. One of the intellectual figureheads of European integration says that this is an open claim for German hegemony in Europe. Well, we've seen this before. It was the Germans, you remember, that sent Lenin into Russia with a train filled with $10 million of gold to start the Russian Revolution. At the same time, the same German central bankers were starting the Federal Reserve in the United States. They created the Bilderberg Group, which created the plan for the European Union and the Euro. Now we have Prime Minister David Cameron is accusing people who oppose a transatlantic treaty as saying that they are trying to poison the pack. He says they're telling us we will all be force-fed chlorinated chicken. Have you ever heard anybody say that the transatlantic treaty is about feeding us chlorinated chicken? This is the same kind of phony straw man arguments we see being done with Jade Helm. Where the media comes out and the president comes out, look, we're not going to invade Texas. This isn't the beginning of martial law. We didn't say that. We said this is preparation for martial law. And of course, they are going to contaminate the food with GMOs and with other things, and we will have no say-so about it. It will be done for the corporations that are doing this in secret. David Cameron could shut down these rumors, he claims, about chlorinated chicken if he would let us see the agreement. But of course, it is secret, just like Jade Helm is secret. We see the government in every respect, in every country, doing the same thing. No, we won't rue the day that we stop the TTIP. The day we stop that will be the day that we rule, that we, the people, rule. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Now, as I pointed out earlier in the broadcast, we have Twitter exploding with people who are mocking anyone's concern about the secrecy surrounding this massive military operation exercise, which is taking place outside of military bases. We see things like this photo of a massive parachute drop and the comment, first reports begin filtering in from the front lines in Texas, or showing screenshots from the movie Starship Trooper. Someone in Dallas, however, had it exactly right. They said, giving us enough information to concern us, but not enough for us to know what's actually going on. I don't want this to become a police state. You're foolish if you're not concerned, given everything that we've seen about this government, as I pointed out earlier. Today, I want you to look at a caller that we had a few months ago as this broke, talking about a scenario that is eerily similar to what happened today. And of course, Alex Jones said he had heard the same scenario from some law enforcement officers, how they might use attacks from ISIS to establish military martial law either now or in the future at some point in time. Here's that clip. Jay, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Uh, God bless you, Alex. Uh, I just want you to, to hear this scenario and see what you think. Uh, Operation James held 15. You have these expanse over 15, uh, over uh, nine states. And with that, with the open border and these um, Islamic camps, then ISIS fighters pop up. Then it shifts from there, from a training thing to a real uh, scenario where you have uh, Boston bombing style searches for people that did like the 2013 Silicon Valley power grid attack. I've heard this scenario from actually police I know who are speculating, but they say the problem with the drill this big is that if the word is there's going to be a bunch of Boston bombing or mall shootings, and that's come out in the news, even the FBI said that after I've talked about it, they're saying ISIS is in all 50 states. They believe they're going to start attacking. They, they think the Southwest is the target. You have a Southwest drill that's a cover to prepositioned troops the troops aren't part of it, but they leave the border open, the feds do, to allow the infiltration. Then the troops think they're the saviors. The public now accepts permanent military occupation under the cover of getting rid of ISIS. It's, it's, I've, I've heard that by some, some smart people. We have, and we have thousands of bin Ladens somehow that we always have to hunt for in country forever and a day. That's right. And then they build up the paramilitary force like the Patriot Act and the rest of it, and they flip it on to the gun owners and the veterans, which, again, we told folks they would do, and they've now done. Yes, that is, that's the scenario. It's why they've given the Stinger missiles to al-Qaeda. It's why they've armed them and turned you know, the Middle East over to ISIS, is so they can then launch attacks, which they'll be launching legitimately. I mean, I mean they really hate us. They're a real terror group. Uh, but that attack will be used to take our freedoms, absolutely. And again, that's an interesting flashback in light of today's events. Of course, we're not saying that's what's going to happen. We're not saying that this is going to be martial law. We have said all along 
This is preparation for martial law. We're going to break that down for you later in this broadcast. First, Jakari is going to take a look at some of these straw man arguments, just like David Cameron was saying. They're going to force feed you chlorinated chicken is what critics of the transatlantic treaty are saying. No, that's not what they're saying. We're not saying this is an invasion of Texas by the Americans. They're taking over our military bases. As long as they use these straw man arguments, that is what we're going to push back against. And of course, Jakari Jackson has a report on that. And after the break, Alex Jones is going to tell you the real preparations that have been going on for a long time about martial law. Stay with us. Jakari Jackson here. Jade Helm 15 has kicked off in the state of Texas. Now, in case you haven't heard enough about Jade Helm in the past few months, it's a military exercise over several different states involving various types of, I guess, training. In some places, you're going to have guys trying to blend in with civilian populations. In some places, you're going to have guys actually jumping out of helicopters and other things to that effect. Now, the reason we started covering this is early on, we encountered some contradictory information because initially the guys were coming out and saying the representatives of the drill, they were saying that we were invited onto people's land. People just, you know, happened to call the base one day and said, hey, why don't you come out here and use our private land for your military exercise? And then we found out through uh, various outlets that that wasn't necessarily the case. Uh, so how counties were picked in Texas comes down to this. The land was volunteered by the private landowner. They came to us. Okay, They are not getting any reimbursement for volunteering their land. They believe in training America's special operations forces, not only in work, but also in deed. News West 9 out of Big Spring, Texas. And this is one of the areas where there will be Jade Helm exercises conducted. And the title of the article, written by Julia Ding, says Big Spring landowners paid to accommodate Jade Helm. This is a quote from the mayor, Larry McLeland. Now, didn't the lieutenant colonel just say that there was going to be no payoffs whatsoever? And in this article, it says that the landowners were approached by the government. So there's Lieutenant Colonel Astoria and also Thomas Meade, the two representatives for the drill. Now, at the... Um, gathering lieutenant colonel spoke but uh, thomas meade did not and the reason i bring this up is because you have two representatives who are reading off cue cards and powerpoint presentations and at least in bastrop texas they were standing about five yards away from each other and they couldn't keep the story straight amongst themselves so we're not training any type of law enforcement <clears throat> during this training exercise it's not happening the only coordination now that will take place is we're just letting them know, hey, here's what happened last 24 hours, here's what's happening next 24 hours. Because there are times um, where we ask at times the uh, law enforcement folks to do a traffic stop for us, to check our guys, to see why they're doing what they're doing, when they're doing it, and why they're doing it. Talking about role players, and you mentioned the role players, I'm curious as to how you guys came about these role players. As far as the role players go, they are going to be service members. We can't do the exercise without the public's help. Uh, things that we look for uh, from that perspective is we look for people that are willing to be a role player. Now, back when you were a child and they gave you that test and they said, hey, which of these statements don't go together? Had you pointed out back in the day that what Listoria is saying today doesn't match up with what me said a few weeks ago, you would have got the gold star for critical thinking and common sense. But if you do that as an adult, they call you a conspiracy theorist. For right now, I want to direct your attention to a New York Times article. As Jade Helm 15 military exercise begins, Texans keep watch just in case. Now, the reason I bring this up is because they'll start with a statement here that's actually the first sentence, and then they liken InfoWars to it later on in the article, which is to say that because InfoWars questions various aspects of Jade Helm and points out when their spokesmen can't keep their story straight, we automatically have to fall into some of the wild conspiracy theories that are actually conspiracy theories. First sentence in this article. Despite the internet chatter about trains with shackles and Walmart stores being closed to be used as detention camps. Let's stop right there. Our head writer, head editor of Infowars.com, Paul Joseph Watson, put out not one but two videos debunking these Walmart claims that they're supposed to be used for Jade Helm 15. Here's a very short section of that. And yes, the plumbing explanation does appear to be a complete lie. 
at least in the case of Pico Rivera, California. But it's not a cover-up for Walmart stores being used in the Jade Helm military exercise. It's not a cover for the implementation of martial law or FEMA death camps. So there you have it. InfoWars position is that Walmarts have nothing to do with Jade Helm 15. Now let's scroll down further in the article to where they actually mention InfoWars and Alex Jones by name. A report on InfoWars, a website operated by Alex Jones, a libertarian-leaning radio talk show host from Texas, at least they called him a libertarian and not a Republican as uh, many these sites try to do, suggested the name Helm was an acronym for Homeland Eradication of Local Militants. When I heard this news and read this article, I went and asked our writers, do you guys know anything about this acronym? Kit said, no, we didn't write it, but I do believe I know where it came from. And he directed me to this Planet Infowars. It's a site for our viewers, fans, people to go in there and share different types of information and conduct their own research. Now, while we do encourage people's research, we don't necessarily agree with all of it. And here's a comment from Luke. Jade Helm deciphered, and this is talking about the acronym, Joint Assistance for Development and Execution, along with Homeland Eradication of Local Militants. And he goes on to add, it doesn't get any clearer than this. And once again, we do encourage Luke and anybody else to do their own research, but we don't necessarily agree with it. Flip this around. Let's say if you went to NFL.com, I'm pretty sure the New York Times, the toilet paper of record, as Gerald Salente likes to call them, wouldn't go to NFL.com, go to the comments section and find somebody who took the NFL acronym National Football League and change it into something else and present that as actual news. Nobody on our staff came out with this uh, Jade Helm acronym. So these are the things they do to try to deceive you, the viewing public, and don't fall for their bull. You can find more reports on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube.